Uh, reparations. Um, th that that's that's a conversation that's been ongoing. Uh, I feel like it comes up here and there, and and and, I, and people always wait for some type of. Hey, listen, if if people are getting either paychecks or what's supposedly due to them, what about African Americans and reparations? Yeah, I, listen, I, I'm not generally. I think it's. A, you see the stuff going on in California, and it's like, well, you know, if we took 10x the California budget, this is, I'm like, what, like, you know, I, I look at, you know, me, do, do I pay into this? Like, my grandparents came here in 1906. Was, you know, we were never, uh, uh, I, like, I, I think the idea I, is that gets, African Americans built the country, so anybody who even uh, are even a byproduct or a recipient of anything good should. Not only did we build this country, but our uh, trademarks, our patents, our copyrights, everything has been stolen from us. Now, I understand Donald Trump's uh, Jr.'s genuine concern about who's paying it and who should pay it. Um, I think reparations need to come in the form of African Americans don't pay any more taxes. Since y'all don't want to pay it, we shouldn't continue to pay into the Federal Reserve, which is owned by the Rothschilds family. That's who need to pay us reparations. And if they don't want to get up off of the cash, then we don't need to pay taxes since we built, our ancestors built this country. Then again, the Federal Reserve is signing contracts and deals with the United States of America government to send money over to Israel. They're already sending, what, $30 billion and an extra $80 billion this year alone? And then sending it to Ukraine and nothing for the people in this country that built the country. Hey, I will be cool with not paying taxes. I will be cool with reverting black expressions and intellectual property back to black people. Because white people can't tell our stories for us. And they shouldn't be able to. As a matter of fact, have y'all seen Good Times, the cartoon on Netflix? Talking about Norman Lear created it. No, he didn't. Eric Montez created it. And he homeless on Skid Row right now. Norman Lair died and Tyler Perry sat up there on Jimmy Fallon and said, oh, Norman Lair and the greatness that he gave to our community. No, the fuck he did. Norman Lair is a white Jewish man that has no experience and nothing about the South Side of Chicago, which is what Good Times, the TV show back in the 70s was about, as well as the cartoon. And then on top of that, it's so much propagation in the Good Times cartoon on Netflix, right? Why is Steph Curry executive producing it? You all have white boy. You ain't live that hard, rough lifestyle. Your god sister is a white NBA player. You don't have no black American experience. So when you watch something like Good Times, the cartoon on Netflix, and you think about the MK Ultra, the first episode is the most important episode because it conditions you to watch it and continue to watch it. When you see a little baby that's a drug dealer having issues with his father, they're saying for the kids to go out and sell drugs, it's cool to go out and sell drugs. It's cool to beef with your father. All of that psychological stuff is what conditions you. Norman Lear did not create that. Eric Montez did. He don't have the credit on paper. He don't have the credit financially. Okay? So we're not going to sit up here and act like a white person built this country or built intellectual property expressions that our ancestor did based on our upbringing, based on our culture, and they get the benefit off of it. We don't need to pay no more motherfucking taxes at the very least. Should pay into the people who are the ancestors that helped build the foundation and those direct those direct descendants of those ancestors somehow, which obviously wouldn't be me, yeah, by the way. I, I, I get the concept. I'm, I'm sort of... Look at it, which obviously wouldn't be me. DJ Academics ain't no more different than a Sheila Jackson, who's in charge of reparations, HR 40, go looking up, or Jean Paul Crier, the DEI hire, because she's a lesbian from France and the House Speaker speaking on reparations. They don't care. He don't care. That's why he saved the question for last. Oh, I'm going to look in here and let people got a lot of questions. What about reparations? You knew that was a question that we wanted to ask and answer. You knew that. Ain't nobody write that in the chat. You strategically plan for that to be last. I believe him and Trump Jr. had a previous conversation before this interview, laughed about black people, how we begging for money, and he's not entitled to it, and he don't support it, and we're going to ask that last just to please them. Why don't you post this on your YouTube? Because you know your black American audience on YouTube would have seen this, and they would have called you out. As a matter of fact, as soon as he, Trump Jr., answered the question about reparations, in real time, DJ Academics privated the video and deleted it from his YouTube. And now you want to add snippets from what happened on Rumble 
but you don't want that reparations question to come up because you know your whole audience will turn against you. You know, I, I'm not long these concepts because I, a, a, I think they're too complicated. I think they get taken too advantage of. I think, you know, when you see some of the numbers that are being thrown around, it's like, it's like mind blowing. Like, like Bernie had said, like he, he, like he had mentioned that too. Like he was like, yeah, yeah like, like you know, California, they're like, oh, it's like thirty trillion dollars, and we can be fine. I'm like, wait a minute, like, what, <laughs> yeah. like, what are you talking? Like, let's, see. so uh, you know. I, I don't know. I think it's one of these things, obviously, a, a disgusting and terrible time in our country. I, <laughs> you know, I, but I, I just, I don't know how you do that reasonably, logically, equitably. If there, if uh, there was a way, say, say some little genius came up with a way, hey, listen, we're not giving no more money to Ukraine. They're cut off. We're not giving this. And then this excess money, we're going to give some to schools, some of this, and let's but, give but this think, amount. Well, that's different. Let's I mean, give market in some bill. Think, like, isn't that what they do? But I think you're politics? starting to do that you know, with, 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 you know, with schools or, again, you know, funding historically black universities. You're not you know, necessarily funding historically white universities, right? There, there is some difference. There is play there. I think you've seen, you know, certainly this will get you in trouble or me in trouble, but you see, you see some of that with, with affirmative action or something like that, right? There, there has been stuff in there. People are going to say that's not enough, and people are going to say it's terrible that you say that. But, you know, I, I think as a country we're trying to, trying to get through that. I think, you know, as someone who's been out there a lot all over the place, like, you know, I don't and have not seen sort of the rampant racism. That, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, right? But it's, it does not seem like it's what, it, what it's made out to be. And I think there's probably, you know, racism in cultures across, you know, you see, you know, some of the, I see a lot of, you know, a lot of gay guys hate the trans people. And then they're like, I'm like, and you know what? I'm going to stop it there because he pretty much just gave me what I needed. Right. He didn't talk. Basically, he supports overturning affirmative action. And basically, he's like, where's the money going to come from reparations? That's basically what he's saying. I don't care because you was neighbors with Michael Jackson and Trump Tower when he was mulatto opposed to white and all of this other stuff. You ain't stood up and testified about your relationship and experience with Michael Jackson as a kid. You never spoke about that publicly because you're not down with the cause. You sat back and watched. And you talking about reparations. We now have an indication of how Trump feels about black people when it comes to reparation and DEI hires and stuff. So what he did with the HBCUs and the girl that advocated for him on the news media, I think you took a step back with your son speaking on your behalf. He's sitting up there with his legs wide open, got his nuts relaxing on the couch, pretending to smoke a cigarette like he's a man or something like that, talking about reparations and stuff. And I keep trying to tell y'all, my issue with Fannie Willis People like Fannie Willis are blurring the lines of what it means to be racist and what does not mean be racist because she's misappropriating racism. Oh, they coming after me and they way because we black. No, they not. You're a liar. Y'all been sleeping together, embezzling money. You need to go to jail. The judge told her, don't talk about race. Now you're still talking about race. She needs to be held accountable because she's doing a number against black people in our claim that racism does exist in 2024. It's bad enough that Byron Allen went to the Supreme Court and made it harder for Negroes to claim racism. Byron Allen, Brown versus Board of Education, they're the ones who made it easy for the Supreme Court to overturn affirmative action. And Fannie Willis is being tokenized and used as a clear indicator as to why racism doesn't exist in 2024. You don't think Trump, Donald Trump is going to have a personal vendetta against her? So when he's talking about reparations and black people and racism, the only thing that he sees is Fannie Willis. She needs to be held accountable. I'm tired of that. She is bad for us. She needs to be held accountable. Her coochie longer than the motherfucking highway. Fuck Fannie Willis. Fuck Donald Trump Jr. But I do know that there's a lot of scammers that go out and talk about Black Lives Matter and get to create it wealth for themselves and scam people out of money. Specifically, an albino alligator by the name of Sir Major. Full disclosure, I've known Sir Major from Clubhouse for about four years. Very manipulative, very strategic. He has been in courts very much like the founder of Black Lives Matter for embezzlement and fraud. And he was found guilty, which gives us a clear indicator of what the court is going to do to the owner of Black Lives Matter. He was found guilty of uh, stealing money in the name of George Ford. World's sexiest albino, Sir Major Page, accused of creating bogus BLM charity to swipe nearly $500,000 to buy lavish homes, guns, faces, fraud, trial. 
So he has been found guilty. The, the self-proclaimed rural sexist albino began his defense Tuesday after he was accused of creating a bogus Black Lives Matter sub-organization to steal nearly $500,000 from unsuspected donors to fund a lavish lifestyle. Sir Major Page, previously known as Tyree Conyers Page, faces federal charges on wire fraud, one count of concealment, money laundering, and two counts of money laundering steaming from his September 2020 arrest. The actor turned activist to Conman allegedly created a bank account in 2018 titled Black Lives Matter of Greater Atlanta INC, where he was the sole signer of the nonprofit organization and received donations at the Facebook users linked their birthday donations wish to the nonprofit account. Wow. He alleged, allegedly defrauded donors out of $467,345.18 out the BMEGAL's tax exempt statute as a charity with the IRS was revoked. So they got him. Um, they got him. So they got him on some paperwork. They got him on panning the black people. First of all, he looked like a glow worm. I'm talking about he showed up to court looking like a clean chitlin in a suit. Looked like one of them thongs from that cartoon that's running around because he ain't got no pigmentation in his skin. He has harassed a significant amount of African people saying that he was scared for his life and they might eat him. And he want to pander to black people. Went up there and took George Floyd's name to collect over $500,000 to fund prostitution to buy a house, to do scamming, to harass people. They even said he died and dashed at five-star restaurants claiming that they are racist. He arrested, pretended to be a police officer and arrested a black woman. The Georgia Capitol Police blamed, quote, miscommunication for not finding out for months about a man who managed to bring a gun past private security in a key government building. It turns out that man had already been arrested multiple times in Metro Atlanta for impersonating a police officer. Well, Fox 5 I-Team reporter Randy Travis joins us with more about this security breakdown. And you have some frightening pictures of what happened, Randy. That's right, Russ and Sinead. We've already reported on the guy who got this gun into a secure area of the Sloppy Floyd building in downtown Atlanta. He eventually pled guilty to lesser charges and is currently on probation. But we can find no evidence the private security company suffered any punishment for failing to do its job. The Sloppy Floyd building across the street from the Capitol houses important state offices like pardons and paroles, the insurance commission, and the secretary of state. You're allowed to bring a gun into the lobby, just not past these security checkpoints leading to those sensitive government agencies. Yet last fall, this man did just that. You have a guy that comes in and he's dressed the part, he's got the equipment, and he basically talked his way through. House Chairman of Public Safety Alan Powell didn't even know about the security breach until the Fox 5 I team told him. We come here to make you uncomfortable. But long before it happened, local law enforcement was well aware of this man. He calls himself Sir Major Page, leader of Black Lives Matter of Greater Atlanta, a group that broke off from the original Black Lives Matter organization here in Georgia. I come over here and I watch what's going on and I hold these cops accountable. But in the last year, authorities would arrest Page multiple times for impersonating a police officer. One of those came while Page took it upon himself to direct bus traffic at a downtown MARTA stop, then demanding to know who was in this car. He found out who he was. The man was an Atlanta cop. That would become the third time Page would be arrested for impersonating a police officer before he walked into the Sloppy Floyd building with a gun. According to a report from the private company Dynamic Security, Page refused to show ID to their staff, claiming he was with the FBI and they were hindering an investigation. Somehow a Dynamic Security supervisor let him through. This is a surveillance picture from inside the Secretary of State's corporate records office showing an armed page waiting in line. And get this, not only did Dynamic allow Page to get past security with a gun, they also allowed him to leave without questioning him any further. In fact, Capitol Police say they were not made aware of the security breach until January of this year, nearly four months after it happened. <laughs> Within days, Capitol Police obtained warrants against Page, arresting him at this public demonstration in DeKalb County. They would eventually recover his 45 caliber Glock, taser, handcuffs, and other law enforcement type gear. 
This summer, Page pled guilty to misdemeanor obstruction and was placed on two years probation with no guns. Page and his attorney declined comment to the Fox 5i team about the security breakdown. That's ridiculous that it ever happened. I mean, I can't, I just can't believe it myself. Jerry Henry of GeorgiaCarry.org supports being able to take guns into all parts of government buildings as another layer of protection. No. But if you're going to restrict weapons, he says make sure the security checkpoints are run by competent people. That's no security. That is pretend security. What kind of security do we have, though, if all it takes to get a gun into a government building is to say you're an FBI agent? Well, that's exactly right. You comfortable that people in the Twin Towers are safe when they go to work now? Sure, I'm as safe as they can be. If I had to take a guess, I'd say that probably they might be more secure now than they ever were. Dynamic security did not return repeated calls for comment. The Department of Public Safety says it has received no other formal complaints about the company's performance. And they're still working here. That's, that's a crime in itself as far as I'm concerned. They should have been booted out the day they found out about it. Now, again, we left multiple messages for Dynamic at their Georgia office and at the Sloppy Floyd building, but got no response. And Page's attorney wanted me to stress that uh, even though his client did plead guilty to obstruction, misdemeanor obstruction, that the impersonating a police officer charges were dismissed. So he didn't plead guilty to those. Hmm. Okay, so with this Dynamic security company, we haven't heard from them. Do we know at this point if they're making any adjustments to ensure that something like this doesn't happen again? Well, I'm told that they are just supposed to follow the rules, and the rules are that if someone shows up at your uh, location and says that they're with the FBI, but they don't show any ID and they want to get by with a gun, you're supposed to call the Capitol Police to check on them, not yeah. call one of your supervisors who then, for some strange reason, lets them go on through. Yeah. So if they follow policy, if they follow the rules, Hopefully people will be secure there. Yeah, I mean, Page was a harmless pretender, but he could have shot the place up. You don't know who would have been able to get in right. if this particular type of breakdown continued. That's the scary part. All right, Randy, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks, Randy. When they arrested him, he, oh, you're, you're holding my hand, and I'm black, and I'm great. So it's a whole bunch of goofballs and saying that he's like a leader. Brother, man, you're not going to get no statue. He sat up there and testified in the Ohio Federal Court for three hours telling on himself, and they finna put him behind them goddamn monkey balls. He traded a 13-month offer for 33 years, and he need to go get up out of here. You are a detriment to the black community, sir. Goodbye. Good motherfucking bye, okay? And at the end of the day, he ain't even black. I don't give a fuck. He had a rough childhood, and now he want to come up and do some shit, making it harder for black people. I don't support that. I don't believe in that. I think he needs to be made an example of, just like Fannie Willis and the actual owner of Black Lives Matter organization. Now, let's move on to Courtney Clemmy. Now, this information came out when I was on an involuntary hiatus, so we're going to cover it right now. And when Courtney Clemmy trials start, we're going to also cover it. New body cam footage released in case of OnlyFans model charges with boyfriend's unalivement. Okay, let's listen to this. New only on Level 10, killing new video capturing the chaos after police were called to an apartment where an OnlyFans model allegedly stabbed her boyfriend. Two years later, Courtney Clemmy is awaiting trial for his murder. Our crime specialist Bridget Matter is live in Miami with more of the dramatic video you've got to see. Bridget. This video is very telling. It shows police responding after they say Courtney Clenny stabbed her boyfriend Christian Obamselli. She is in hysterics while he's in another room unresponsive. New Miami police body camera footage shows Courtney Clenny cradling her boyfriend Christian Obamselli. Baby, 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 wake up, wake up. Police say she had just stabbed him inside their luxury Edgewater apartment. Police led a bloody plenty to the hallway. Oh, no, 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 I can't, I can't let this go. It's my goal. Wait, it wasn't her. While paramedics try to help Christian, who became unresponsive. Wow. Christian, help himself. Christian, help himself. Please, please. please. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Mm -mm. Sit down. Blood all on her titties and everything. Why are you yelling at me? Do no more. Why are you yelling at me? Do no Face. Sit down. Okay, okay, we, don't know. we don't know what's going on. We don't know what happened. I'm terrified so, for him. Right now, yeah. Make some space for the door and let's get out. Detectives began questioning Clenny. She tells them the two had just broken up and were fighting. So he throws you against the wall? Then he put me on the ground. You threw the knife at him? Yeah. But I was, I was so scared. Plenty says she threw a knife at Christian in self-defense. So. She continuously asked police about his condition. Is he dead? Listen, is listen, he dead? Listen, listen. Sit down. Okay, no, I'll sit down. I just, I just, you scared me. Sit down. He's not dead, is he? 
Uh, uh, no, they're taking him to the hospital right now. Christian was pronounced dead at the hospital. Wow. Plenty claims this was self-defense, mm -mm. but prosecutors believe this is second-degree murder. The stabbing happened April of 2020. Ooh, look at all that blood. Months later, Plenty was arrested in Hawaii on a second-degree murder charge. She was a she was arrested in Hawaii. You done went on a vacation, bald and greasy, probably done got you some new black penis and everything. Child, y'all niggas better stop divesting. And I know it was an African that she was with, but y'all better stop, okay? You better stop. You better figure out. You better stay with your own race. Y'all seen what happened to Sade Robinson over in Milwaukee. First our big story tonight at 5. Milwaukee County investigators found more remains believed to belong to Sade Robinson. She, of course, is the 19-year-old woman police say was killed and dismembered after a first date. Christina Van Zels is live in South Milwaukee. That's where those body parts were found. Christina, what do we know? Ted, when it comes to this area, it's technically closed off, but people who live around here say many still walk along the shoreline and the beach. Investigators tell us that they already had scheduled a sonar boat detection to go out and search Lake Michigan tomorrow before this discovery. But today, Shawnee Robinson's loved ones were out here searching for any additional clues they could find. Just the brutality of everything. It's an investigation leaving people in Milwaukee County speechless. Cutting up someone's body is just, it's hard to even say the words. Investigators say a person walking the beach spotted human remains around 7.30 Thursday morning. The sheriff's office says a torso and arm were found, believed to belong to Shade Robinson. She is the 19-year-old authorities say was killed and dismembered on April 1st. And I think I'm grateful that they're finding more of her remains. Hopefully that'll bring closure to the family, but it, it doesn't make it any easier. 33 year old Maxwell Anderson is a man charged. Investigators say the two were on a first date. It comes after weeks of searches for the rest of her remains. Robinson's leg was found in Watermont Park in Cudahy, and then additional remains were found in three locations in Milwaukee County. It's scary nowadays that you have to worry about stuff like that. Thursday, the Anderson family issued a statement before the additional remains were found. It reads in part, I would like to express our deepest sympathy and heartfelt condolences to the family and loved ones of Sade Robinson. We are shocked and devastated by her senseless death, and we join the entire community in celebrating Sade's life. Robinson's loved ones search the area and say they won't find closure until all of her remains are found. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone if you have something that can help their investigation, give them a call. You can even do that anonymously. As for Maxwell Anderson, he is due back in court on Monday. Reporting live in South Milwaukee, Christina Van Zelst, Fox 6 News. Chop the pieces because he hated her. All of them need to go to jail. Okay, so be careful when you divest. Get your, <laughs> you know, fucker, get the reparations like they Mario coins and get gone or whatever the case may be. Or at least have conversations about different cultural experiences so that you can get through that division and that hatred that you have for each other or it's just not going to work.